move into house in the outback in South Australia in 2005. Pretty much every single person living in our street had only lived there for under five years, apart from an elderly couple that lived at the end of the street. This elderly couple had lived in the street for 40 years, and had raised their children in the street, they said strange things happened in the street, and a lot of people can't handle it and leave, they never really went into what scared people just saying the whole street was haunted or something like that, but they did say it only starting happening in the early 90s. First experience I had was a week after moving in, I heard a low-pitched humming sound coming from outside my bedroom window, when I looked out I saw this tall black figure with long arms and long figures, with no facial features, he was slightly transparent. He was backed up against the wall holding up the garage area of my house. Due to its height he had to hunch over, I was looking out for around 5 seconds before it realized I was looking at it, it turned its head towards me and I quickly ran away from the window and ran and told my parents, my dad went out and saw nothing was there. I sketched what I saw, pick related. I started hanging out with the neighborhood kids, we were all teenagers, and they told me their stories, and all described the same figures I had seen. One of the kids was aboriginal, and we would go visit his grandfather a lot, he called the entities Mayamula, which translated roughly to stranger man. He said that the aboriginals in the area had been dealing with him long before the arrival of Europeans, and said that they weren't of the land, which kind of meant they didn't belong there or weren't native to there, and that they would take children away and eat them. He said that the aboriginals cast them behind the creek, but since the creek partially dried up the Mayamula had once again been able to get into the town. The town that I lived in was built directly over the previous aboriginal settlement, this aboriginal tribe wasn't nomadic, and had remained in a small area for over a thousand years. One day me and my friends were playing cricket out on the flat patch of desert in between the road and my house, the sun was setting, and as we were packing up our stuff we noticed that there were people off in the distance approaching the road, the closer they got the more details we could see, and we noticed that they were fully black, tall and that they weren't walking but floating. We could also hear a low pitched humming sound that got louder the closer they got. We bolted back to my house, and told my parents but my parents once again didn't believe us. I hassled my father enough to drive down on his motorbike to the area we saw them approaching, after 9 minutes he came back to the house, visibly shaken saying he saw them, and that I wasn't to go down there anymore. Every time I tried to get details on what happened he would always change the subject. One night I was coming home from a party with my friends, and as we passed the empty lot in the street we saw these two small figures sitting on tree stumps, just staring at us. One was bigger than the other, and once again we heard a low pitched humming sound. We were all high as fuck and were just standing there, laughing thinking we were tripping out until we realized that we were all seeing the exact same thing, and we couldn't all be hallucinating the same thing, one of my mates took a step towards the one closer to us and when he did it made this very deep growl, I had never heard anything like it, and to make a long story short we screamed and ran to my house. I'm mentioning this because unlike the tall figures I had seen, and I'd see them a lot at night, these things were completely physical, and not transparent. They were shaped like babies but didn't have a neck. Now this is where shit heats up. There used to be a group of kids that would take their dirt bikes beyond the creek, and would go riding way out in the desert, one day they didn't come home and everyone assumed they had just gotten lost. They were found a week later, all five of them. They were alive, with no food and no water out in the Australian outback for a week. What scared me was what one of the kids younger brother told me. He said that his brother had said they saw a light out in the desert, and they felt compelled to follow it. He said he felt like he was in a trance, and they didn't stop following this light for the entire week they were out in the outback. He said no matter how far they kept traveling they didn't seem to get anywhere close to it. He said if the farmer that found them hadn't have found them they never would have stopped following the light, and eventually would have died. Anyway, getting to the final part of the story. So my mother had gotten sick of me being scared all the time, and called her sister who lived in Adelaide to come visit. She's a psychic or something. So she comes down, and the moment she pulls up she tells us not to tell her anything about what we've seen, and that she's going to wander around the street for a while and come back and tell us what she saw. When she came back she was visibly shaken, she told me that these things were unlike anything she had ever experienced, and that she had also run into the spirit of an old aboriginal woman. The woman told her that her tribe were a split off group from the Tharawal, and came to the area that would become the town I lived in to escape the Mayamula, but the Mayamula followed them. The woman then showed her horrific images of these things slaughtering aboriginal children, and eating them through a small slit in their mouth. The woman then told her she drowned herself in the creek so she would act as a spiritual barrier to keep the Mayamula out. She said this worked until a pyramid-shaped pathway was built facing the way the Mayamula had come from. 
This allowed them to come in once again, not the fact that the creek had dried up. The aboriginal woman led my Andy down the path to show her something even more terrifying. After eating the small children, they would rebirth these kids, to be their minions or some shit. My auntie said these beings are completely physical, and live out in the desert, and sometimes come into the town for food. She said these things are harmless, and mainly just keep an eye on people for the Mayamula. My auntie became confused, and said if they were killing children just to make them into spies, then what was their motive in the first place? It was explained to her that the Mayamula just seemed intent of inflicting pain and suffering on people, she said that they rape women and men alike, make women miscarriage, cause accidents and kill the weak. Despite this they seem to have a personal vendetta against the aboriginal woman's tribe, and seem intent on wiping them out, this is why they remain focused on the town. My auntie came to the conclusion that the Mayamula aren't human spirits, and aren't spirits at all. She believed that they were a physical, reproducing race of beings and are most likely aliens. She said she had heard of similar beings all around the world. After hearing all of this we put the house on the market, and began preparations to leave. A couple of days before we left I went on one last motorbike ride where my father had told me not to go, while riding along a dirt path I saw this rock on the side of the path, it was weird because it looked like it was smoothed down a bit, and had some markings on it. I don't know if it's related at all to what had been happening, I personally think it's someone playing a joke because none of the engravings on it are aboriginal, and the engravings on it are all over the place. Anyways I took it with me when we moved. Pick related. So yeah this is my experience with the paranormal, thought I'd share it with you all and it'd be great if someone else had an experience like this that they could share. Rock with the engravings outline. Gotcha mate, he's going to send more when he decides to not be a lazy fuck. Anyways I took it with me when we moved. You fucked up. Ah there are also these. These are regional cryptids in the aboriginal lore. Holy fuck, mate. Just showed my auntie this and she's convinced that the creatures she saw are McCoy. She said they kill weak people and eat children. Thanks for finding this. This is a good one, op. Similar entities perhaps me and my friends encountered several times during our lifetime living the dorm life at a school high on top of the cliff, facing the South China Sea. 2005 to 2009, one of the encounters goes like this. It was late evening, me and mateys doing school project at our classroom. In our culture, the switching of daylight to dark night, 4 to 8 p.m., symbolize the opening door from the other side, and the start of a new day, not at 12 a.m. So it is not advisable to be outside the home or took a nap especially children and spiritually weak person, during this time. As how Anon describes it. Guess we just being ignorant of this because well it's modern world, so such thing just an old wives tale. We took a rest for a while and my eyes captured something seemingly odd outside the classroom window. Thought it just the tree shadows falls on the window pane in the shape of an overwhelming dull person, so I just ignored it, never ever mention it once to my mates. We call it a day and will continue the work later because 5.30 pm is dinner time. The outside was in dusk color that we are about to go back to our dorm when my mate told us three that why the tree shadow is still there. So all of us take a peek, and that figure was indeed there. No face. Just dark entity seemingly transparent but almost physically touchable. We ran downstairs and off to our dorm without haste. Said nothing of the encounter later that night and the next day, we did investigate whether it's a sick joke or the tree shadow or just hallucination. Neither of those are true because the tree was casting a different kind of shadow, and there's no evidence that a sick joke have took place. Hallucination? Was it possible for the four of us experiencing the same thing at the same time? We see a lot of these out in Borklands, Wagga Wagga. There's a walking track up behind the newly built houses, and you see them in the early hours of the morning behind the trees. First time I saw them I bolted and didn't go back on the track for a while, thinking I might have just been hallucinating or seeing things I went back, and sure enough I saw one of them again and this time I felt extremely threatened and the feeling of impending doom was indescribable. Haven't been back since. So many people who live near me have seen the same things up there, I can only hope they don't building houses up there, it'd be a fucking disaster. And I'll add that I've seen ghosts before, and I've had an encounter with what I believe was a demon. 
I have never felt like I was in so much danger, I have a legitimate feeling that what I saw was going to kill me if I didn't leave. I've never felt that with ghosts, or even demons for that matter. This is a very real fear among the residents out here. I don't like talking about them, and seeing that sketch is scaring the shit out of me, just looking at it knowing I've seen something identical to it only a 6 minute walk from my house is terrifying. This is no joke, and I'd like to thank Hop and this Anon, had no idea this was common in Australia, I've never brought it up with strangers before, unless it gets mentioned you have a way of just forgetting it, I don't know, but these things are real and they're no joke. You'll never experience fear until you come face to face with one of them. Good thread. Australian here too, south coast of NSW, and this shit isn't even really surprising me. I've heard of stuff like this happening all over Australia. In my town the aboriginals have this legend called the Gulaga. From what I've heard it sounds exactly like what you're talking about. Legend goes that if you're in the bush at night and you say the word Gulaga they will come out and find you and eat you. They are dead set shit scared of it too. I've been at parties and seen aboriginals absolutely wig the fuck out and leave ASAP because some dumb white bloke accidentally said the word. Never had anything that creepy happen to me but I reckon I've definitely felt their presence in the bush before. It'd be a perfectly normal day and I'd just be trekking through the bush when suddenly an intense feeling of paranoia would come over me and I'd basically have to leg it out of there as quickly as I could. I used to live in a rural old town as a teen, and one myth was some horrible flying shitter that would stare at kids through windows with white face paint and red eyes. Apparently if your curtains were open it would snatch you up, even through closed windows, take you away and turn you into another of its kind. I remember one of my black friends flipping the fuck out when I asked them about the myth, and he told me I shouldn't ever talk about it as that could draw attention to where your family lives. It would probably explain why the curtainless window in the laundry was the freakiest fucking thing in that house. Holy. Fucking. Shit. I live in Alaska, and I used to see these things in my backyard for years before I moved. They'd always be hiding behind trees and shit and I could only catch little glimpses of them, like moving behind a tree so I wouldn't see. I have so many stories of these damn things and it freaks me out they get into your house. They used to mess with me from the time I was 6 years old, but I haven't seen them in about 3 years. It's probably not just exclusive to just one location, but the land that I lived on was owned by an occult shaman who ended up burning his house down and opening a portal or something like that. I've posted quite a few stories about them, but no one ever seems interested. Last time I saw one was when my son was just born, and I woke up in the middle of the night to him whimpering, and I look over and there is this tall dark shadow standing over his crib. It didn't have a neck, and its arms hung almost to the floor. I must have made a sound or something, because it looked right at me, hunched its shoulders like it was trying to scare me, then it kind of disappeared. That's not the first time, but I hope it's the last. Sorry if this is all jumbled up, I'm shaking trying to write all this out. This pic really fucks with me. In central Queensland the aboriginals call them tall man. I had a run-in with one while I was carrying a drunk mate home from a party, he was abo, I got to his place freaking the fuck out and his mum explained to me the legends. I'm from CQ, Gladstone in fact. Was literally just about to post about how they are called tall man around here, 